Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. This is a ram pump, a water pump that does not require any fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. Essentially, water falls down a drive pipe, activates this waste valve, which pushes water into the second valve, builds pressure here, and pushes water uphill on a ratio of one to seven. Back in the fall, I disconnected my personal ram pump here in the creek so that it would not freeze over the winter time. But now that it's warming up, it's time to get this up and running. Let's start from the source water and work our way down all the way to where I pump the water to up the hill. This is the state in which I left my ram pump in during the fall. I disconnected the drive pipe over here. I also disconnected the delivery pipe, which takes water uphill. And I drained the pump so that there was no water anywhere in here. And that will prevent this from freezing and cracking during the winter time. Now I've not examined anything up here, so I know there are trees down and who knows what all we're going to find. So let's step up here to the source water, clean off the intake and see if we can't get water back into the system. Looks like we've had several trees fall down during the winter time. It might be a little hard to see, but there is a pipe sticking out of the rocks right here. That is my screened intake. So I need to clear out all of this debris right here and open back up the water source to this. So I can see there's just barely a trickle coming out of that pipe. I'm also noticing that the black pipe that's supposed to be on there shrank during the winter time and it is over here now. So I may have to stretch that a little bit to get it reattached over here. So let's begin digging out this little section and making sure that water is coming out full force from this pipe right here. The temperature was 31 degrees last night, so let's just say this water is cold. It might take me a minute to dig this out, so I feel like you get the idea. I'll bring you back here in just a moment whenever I have this silt cleared away. I managed to get all of the wintertime silt away from my intake pipes. What I have are two three inch pipes with a whole bunch of holes drilled into them and then window screen put on top of that. It essentially just pulls water in and then sends it into a little uh, T right here and out that uh, adapter. So now it's time to get the black poly pipe that you see over there attached into that and we will be good to go for getting water down to the next stage of this process. It is cold, so we'll see if I can get this to attach. Yeah, not too bad. I'll put some heavy rocks on top of that to prevent it from uh, lifting back up. So now that I have that done, what I like to do is cover back up this a little bit with some big rocks. And that just seems to help some of the silt not build up as quickly here. And then I kind of recreate my little dam to prevent the water from flowing over here too quickly. All right, that should do it. I think the intake is done. I'm going to place some big rocks on this pipe to make sure it doesn't get washed out. This is the other end of that poly pipe, and you can see the water is flowing out of it nicely. So this is called a silt filter bucket. It's not necessary for the operation of the ram pump. However, it does make things a lot easier. If you have a way to capture the silt and also a way to have an air-free water source, then it's gonna make things a lot easier for you. So what I wanna do is just place this in my bucket, and it's going to uh, pull out and churn up some of the silt that was left in there over the winter. I have a hole in the bottom of the bucket that I will plug up here in just a moment, but for now, this is just gonna pull out this fine silt. We have a lot of this right here in my water, and that will uh, get into a pump and stop it up. I use this short piece of PVC pipe with a cap on it in order to plug up the hole down here. If you look inside here, there is the drive pipe, which is midway up the bucket, and that gives approximately six inches of silt catchment down here. So right now, the drive pipe is open, so all the water is going down that pipe. But whenever the bucket is full, the overflow goes into this pipe right here. So let's go ahead and move down to the next stage, which is gonna be where the 
ram pump is. As you can see, the water is flowing out of the drive pipe very nicely. I'm going to go ahead and close this off, and that's gonna allow the air bubbles to leave the pipe back up at the bucket, and also give me a chance to get this connected and not get uh, too soaked here. So let's go ahead and get things hooked up. The pump has a union on it that allows me to attach or detach the drive pipe and delivery pipe for any kind of maintenance that I have to do on the pump. The pump will uh, rock back and forth whenever the valve is closing, and so I like to uh, put some rocks on it to hold that in place. So, the pump is not gonna operate if there is no delivery pipe going uphill. And so what I need to do is attach this pipe and uh, that will allow water to begin filling this pipe up. So there's something called back pressure, and that is when you have to have enough pressure going uphill to keep the pressure in the pressure tank. Hope that makes sense. Basically, if you don't have this pipe attached, the pump is not going to work. So what's gonna happen? Whenever I open up the drive pipe, water is going to shoot out of here and close that valve. Then it's going to send water through the pump and fill up the delivery pipe until it reaches the same height as the source water back up there. After that, the pressure tank is gonna fill and this, everything's just gonna stay still. And I'll have to push and cycle this valve until there's enough water in this pipe to keep the pump going. So let's go ahead and turn this on. There we go, that closed. Water is being sent through the delivery pipe and let's see if we get some water in here next. I gave the pump a little time to send the water through this delivery pipe and also for the air to leave the drive pipe. If there's an air bubble in the drive pipe, it can cause the pressure wave to turn back around too quick and the pump will stop. Now we should be ready to start cycling the waste valve. We'll see water climb up in this pressure tank here pretty quick. Now to make sure the pump is working correctly, I can close off this delivery pipe and now the pump will cycle on its own quicker. Let's see if we can get that to happen here. All right, now we're seeing this pressure build up in the tank because it's not going anywhere because we've got unlimited back pressure. Great, the pump seems to be working just as we want it to. But check this out, when I open this, the pump's gonna stop again because we just lost all that pressure in this tank and all the water was shot uphill. So what I have to do is sit here and push this probably up to a hundred times to fill this pipe full of water. Once it's full though, this pump will operate on its own. I recommend a good valve pressing stick so you don't have to lean over. When the valve starts getting easier to press, you know that you're getting closer to the pump working on its own. The ram pump now has sufficient pressure in the pressure tank and back pressure on the delivery pipe to keep this pump running 24 seven all the time. Let's go ahead and follow this pipe up the hill to my storage tanks. If you find the Ram pump fascinating and want to try one out, I have four different sizes available, half inch, three quarter, one inch, and inch and a quarter. You'll find those links in the description down below. The Ram pump is located in my creek about a hundred feet that way, and it goes up the hill 250 feet more this way. Let me show you real quick. As you can see, the hill behind me goes way up into the trees. It's about a 35 foot lift total from where the ram pump is to where my storage tank is. So let's follow the delivery pipe up there and you can see what my storage tanks look like. I have three different locations where I use the water that's stored in my tanks. And this is one of them here. It's kind of my drain as well. So whenever I want to get my system drained out for the winter time, I open up this valve. But for now, we need to close that. Otherwise it will uh, never fill up my tanks up here. I'm now at the top of the hill, which is 35 feet in elevation above the ram pump and about 350 feet away. 
I have a water tower and a 330 gallon IBC tote sitting on top of that tower. And this is what my ram pump fills. It takes about eight hours for this pump to fill up this tank at this height. So I use this water to uh, water my garden and I have uh, lots of ram pump tests and other things that I use the water for. But it's very common for people to use the ram pump water to uh, water their livestock or flush toilets, all kinds of different uses. But livestock and gardens are typically the main things that people use their ram pumps for. Let's step over here and I'll show you all the fittings and workings of my water tower. I have two poly pipes going up the hill. One of them takes water to the tower and one of them allows water to go back down to be used. So if I follow this one over here, it is full of water and that just simply goes up to the top and enters into the lid. I'll show you that in just a moment. The other one comes out the bottom here and this is where water goes to be used downhill. Now you'll notice that I have a stand pipe and this goes up to the level at which I want the water to overflow and that pipe just goes down and over into the woods over there. Uh, I have found that even with 300 gallons a day, it doesn't extend much more than about a five foot circle of wet ground. So soaks in very quickly around here. Uh, I can also turn this off if I need to, but typically it's fine if I leave that on and just keep my lower valves closed. All right, let's step up here real quick and see the water entering in. I built my water tower big enough that I could hold two of these if I wanted to, but so far one has done all that I need it to. Let's step over here real quick and I will show you what it looks like to have this going in. So I simply just uh, opened up this little uh, top piece and sent this inside. So if I hold this up, you can see the flow rate coming out of the ram pump. It's not a lot, but you have that over 24 hours and it will fill this tank up pretty quick. So I just keep that shoved down in there and that uh, just sits there and pumps 24 seven. I hope you found this video of starting up my ram pump helpful. I have over 130 videos on the channel showing various components and installs of the ram pump. So definitely check those out. And be sure to subscribe because I have lots more ram pump content coming in 2024. I'm Seth with Landa House. Be sure to check the links down below if you want to purchase your own pump. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.